Dear colleagues, this patient had acute attack of pain and redness in her right eye. She had vomiting. On examination, intraocular pressure was 60 mm of mercury. The pupil was fixed and dilated. The other eye, the left eye, had a ERG laser peripheral iridotomy. This eye had this attack of acute angle closure glaucoma two days ago. The patient has come to me today and I have taken up this case for clear lens extraction and I want to pull the iris margin, the pupillary margin and try to open the angle and see if it works. If it doesn't work then my next stage surgery will be trabeculectomy with releasable sutures. The IOP came down to about 50 millimeter of mercury by intravenous mannitol 20%. Now I have taken off this case for surgery. The main challenge is antechamber is very shallow. The cornea is edematous because of high intraocular pressure. A 2.8 millimeter main incision has been placed at 10.30 o'clock and at 8 o'clock a paracentesis incision has been made. Now anterior capsule is stained with tripan blue dye so that I can see the capsule. The visibility is very poor. I was very gentle to make the incisions. I haven't made the full 2.8 millimeter incision. It is just to have entered into the anterior chamber because I was worried about expulsive choroidal hemorrhage. Now this is viscoat. I am using viscoat as the viscoelastic substance in this case because it will form the anterior chamber better than HPMC. And now I am going to try to do capsulorexis with 26 gaze bent cystitum. I don't want to use the uterine forceps because the anterior chamber is very shallow. This is another side port incision on the left side of the main incision. And now I want to do capsulorexis. Here is the 26 gaze when cystitum, I want to make the main incision of full length that is 2.8 millimeter full width. Now this is ASPMC being injected over the epithelial surface of the cornea. Now I can see better. I can see the anterior capsule better. And this is the 26 case bent needle, needle cystitum. I incise the capsule and I try to do rexis with the needle itself. I'm trying to do a round axis. I try to remain at equal distance from the pupillary margin and thus I want to achieve a round circular axis. And now 
I inject some more viscoelastic substance and this portion of the rexis I'm using Eutrita forceps and I complete the rexis. That's it. Now hydro dissection is to be done. Since the anterior chamber is very shallow, I am very gentle and very slow in this surgery. Yes, the fluid wave has gone from one equator to the other side. I am gently depressing the nucleus. Uh, Manitol has started working by this time. I can feel that the intraocular pressure has reduced further. And now I want to enter into the eye with the FACO handpiece. This is a clear lens extraction. This is bevel down. In this position itself I want to go into the lens matter because I want to make some room to rotate the tip of the FACO handpiece. And now I rotate the handpiece and now I try to chop the nucleus. Here it is. You just be there. I can't hold it but I try to divide the nucleus at a deeper level. The chopper comes from periphery and I move the teeth towards the chopper and this is I'm trying to divide and conquer whatever works. It's a combination of all techniques. Here I am trying lens tilt for this portion of the nucleus. Nice. One half of the nucleus has been removed somehow. This is the other half of the nucleus. I want to tilt this portion. Yes, it has tilted. And I have been able to remove this portion of the nucleus. That is very good. Now I have to remove this cortical matter. This is viscote again. I want to protect the corneal endothelium. And now I want to remove the cortex. Yes, it is coming nicely with direct Simco cannula. So the inferior portion has come out nicely but in this case the side ports were small and it was not as not able to go into the anterior chamber through the side ports so I decide to take the bimanual IA to remove the cortical matter 
which you can see is there from 8 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Here it is. The irrigation enters into the eye through the 8 o'clock and this is the side port that goes through the 2 o'clock paracentesis opening and that's it. The cortical matter has been removed. And now an intraocular lens is to be placed in the capsular bag I inject viscoelastic substance into the capsular bag here it is this is SPMC because I want to remove the viscoelastic substance easily after lens implantation and this is a hydrophilic acrylic intraocular lens the lens is placed in the groove it is folded in the cartridge care is taken so that the haptics remain in the groove and the lens moves freely in the lumen of the cartridge. And now the intraocular lens is injected into the capsular bag the leading haptic goes into the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is placed in the capsular bag with the help of a Sinsky hook. nice you can check by the Sinsky hook here it is in this way we can check that the anti-capsular rim is in front of the optic of the intraocular lens this has been a very ideal rexis. It is overlapping the periphery of the intraocular lens equally all around. This holds the lens in the capsular bag nicely and the lens doesn't tilt. If one edge of the intraocular lens projects into the anterior chamber, and the other edge of the optic is covered by the anterior capsular rim there may be mild tilt of the intraocular lens and if the anterior capsular rim covers the periphery of the intraocular lens all around say point 5 millimeter or 0.25 millimeter of the edge is covered all around by the anterior capsular rim the centration of the intraocular lens is excellent and now this is the manuba I was talking about I 
I'm pulling the iris margin and trying to open up the angle. The pupil has been dilated and fixed for the last two days and there has been a positional anterior sinecure. And now I am using bimanual IA to pull the margin of the iris, pupillary margin, and pulling towards the center gently so that the angle opens up. The direction of the pull is towards the center and towards the posterior capsule, towards the center and towards the vitreous so that the angle opens up. If this doesn't help, if the intraocular pressure is not controlled by what is being done, my next plan of management is to do trabeculectomy with releasable sutures. Now I am pulling the pupillary margin on the other side so that all the 360 degree of the angle opens up. Now I want to inject some pilocarpine to activate the sphincter pupillae if, if it works and if the angle opens up. In this case the vision was perception of light and projection of rays was accurate in three quadrants. Sometimes these in these patients the projection is not reliable. I have seen some patients where the patient is not able to respond nicely but the patient has got very good vision postoperatively. And this is my second or third case of doing clear lens extraction for acute attack of angle closure glaucoma. This is elderly lady. This patient was about 58 years old. And you can see that the pupil has constricted to some extent. Now I'm injecting a little bit of diluted triamcinolone acetate to decrease the inflammation which can occur, which is bound to occur postoperatively. A little bit of it in, has been injected and after a few seconds I am going to wash it out. This much time is enough. Now I am going to wash out the time alone that was injected in the anterior chamber. Most of the trimsinolone is still there, so I want to remove it and I am injecting, I am using bimanual IA for removal of these trimsinolone acetate. That's it. The case is over. I'm hoping for the best. If the IOP is controlled tomorrow morning, I'll be very happy. If the patient recovers vision, if the patient recovers to at least 624 or 636, I think that will be a great thing. I could see the optic nerve. There was 
uh, reddish hue, not pale. So I am hopeful that the patient may get some amount of vision. Now, in air has been injected and moxifloxacin has been injected into the anterior chamber. Now, I'm hydrating these side ports. This is a view under higher magnification. We can see that the corneal edema has reduced by this time. In this case, I have tried my best to protect the corneal endothelium. At this time, I am behind the intraocular lens and I am irrigating the capsular bag and now the anterior chamber now I form the anterior chamber nicely and conclude the case that's it now I have to check if the main incision and side port incisions are waterproof or not. If they are waterproof, I will be very happy. That's it. Thank you very much. This is a long surgery. If you have watched the full surgery you have tested your patients thank you very much for watching hope this video will help you in some cases